Purposely in this video, we are going to solve some examples on complex numbers as a form of revision. We are going to consider the simplest of examples and then move on to more complex examples in the subsequent videos. So if you are new here, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video and share this video to all your friends. Now let's consider the first question. Find the values of x and y if 3x plus 2yj minus xj plus 5y is equal to 7 plus 5j. So let's try to solve this question. So we have 3x plus 2yj minus xj plus 5y equals 7 plus 5j and we are asked to find the values of x and then y. Now this set of values are made up of real and imaginary components. Now we know that a complex number is made up of the real part and the imaginary part. So the first thing we need to do is to group this set of values into real and imaginary parts. So for the real part we have 3x plus 5y and then for the imaginary, those are the values we have j attached to them. So these are negative xj plus 2yj and that is equal to 7 plus 5j. At this point, let's factor out j. So we have 3x plus 5y plus j and then inside of the bracket, we have negative x plus 2y equals 7 plus 5j. So now let's compare the coefficients of the real and imaginary parts and then we can generate two linear equations and solve them simultaneously. So for the real part we have 3x plus 5y equals 7. Let's call this equation 1 and then for the imaginary we have negative x plus 2y equals 5. Let's call this equation 2. Next, we are going to make one of the variables the subject from any of the two equations. So from equation 2, we are going to make x the subject. Which means that we are going to transpose negative x to the right hand side. So that becomes x equals 2y minus 5. Let's call this equation 3. And then we substitute equation 3 into equation 1. So that becomes we have 3 times x. So in place of x, we have 2y minus 5 plus 5y equals 7. Now let's multiply 3 across. So that becomes 6y minus 15 plus 5y equals 7. 6y plus 5y, we have 11y. And then we transpose negative 15 to the right hand side. So that becomes 7 plus 15 and that is equal to 22. So we divide through by 11. And then we have y equals 2. Now let's put in the value y equals 2 into equation 3 to find the value of x. So we have x equals 2 times y which is 2 minus 5. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 5 that is equal to negative 1. Therefore we have x equals negative 1. Therefore x is equal to negative 1 y is equal to 2. Now let's move on to the next question. So for question 2, simplify 2 plus 3j all exponents 4 divided by 1 minus 2j leaving your answer in polar form. So the first thing we need to do is to simplify the numerator and then divide by the denominator, then we can leave or convert our answer from the rectangular form to the polar form. 
So let's begin with the solution. So first of all, we say that let z equals 2 plus 3j all exponent 4 divided by 1 minus 2j. So let's simplify the numerator. So for the numerator, 2 plus 3j all exponent 4 can be simplified as 2 plus 3j all exponent 2 times 2 plus 3j all exponent 2. Now let's simplify 2 plus 3j all exponent 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3j is 6j. 3j times 2 is also 6j. And then 3j times 3j becomes, we have 3j times 3j. So that becomes 9j square. And then we know that j square is equal to negative 1. Therefore, we have this to be negative 1 times 9, which is negative 9. Therefore, 3j times 3j is equal to negative 9. So this becomes 4 plus 12j minus 9. So 4 plus 12j minus 9. 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So finally, we have this reduced to negative 5 plus 12j. And then we can as well multiply by negative 5 plus 12j. So 2 plus 3j all exponent 2 becomes negative 5 plus 12j. So let's multiply these two values. So we have negative 5 times negative 5, that is 25. Negative 5 times 12j becomes negative 60j 12j times negative 5j becomes negative 60j and then 12j times 12j becomes 144j square j square is equal to negative 1 so negative 1 times 144 becomes negative 144 25 minus 144 becomes negative 119 negative 60j minus 60j becomes negative 120j so we have the numerator simplified as negative 119 minus 120j therefore we have z equals negative 119 minus 120j divided by 1 minus 2j so at this point we are going to divide negative 119 minus 120j by 1 minus 2j. Now in dividing a complex number by another complex number, we basically multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So we have z equals negative 119 minus 120j divided by 1 minus 2j. So we are going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So the conjugate of the denominator becomes 1 plus 2j. So we multiply top and bottom by 1 plus 2j. So let's simplify. Negative 119 times 1 becomes negative 119. Negative 119 times 2j becomes negative 238j negative 120j times 1 negative 120j and then negative 120j times 2j so we have negative 120 times 2 becomes negative 240 and then j square is negative 1 so negative 1 times this value becomes plus 240 we have all of this divided by 1 times 1 is 1, negative 2j times 1 is negative 2j, 1 times 2j is 2j, and then negative 2j times 2j becomes negative 4j square. j square is equal to negative 1, so that becomes plus 4. 
so we have z equals negative 119 plus 240 becomes 121 and then negative 238j minus 120j is negative 358j all divided by negative 2j cancels out 2j we are left with 1 plus 4 which is 5 therefore we have z equals 1 2 1 divided by 5 minus 358 j divided by 5 now we can simplify this to become j equals 1 2 1 divided by 5 gives 24.2 and then 358j divided by 5 becomes 71.6j. Therefore, we have z simplified as 24.2 minus 71.6j. Now, we are going to convert this or represent this in the polar form. So, we had z equals 24.2 minus 71.6 j and we are going to represent this in the polar form so we have the x value to be 24.2 and the y value to be negative 71.6 now let's represent this information on the agand diagram so we have this to be the agand diagram we have the imaginary axis and the real axis we have the x value to be 24.2 and that is positive so we have this on the positive x axis and then we have the y value to be negative 71.6 so this is negative 71.6 and then we can have our complex number somewhere here Now we are going to let the angle between the positive x axis and z in the clockwise direction to be alpha so that we can find the value of alpha. However, we are interested in finding the angle theta, which is the angle formed between the positive x axis and z in the anticlockwise direction. So even before that, let's find the value of the modulus, that is r. So we have r equals the square root of the x value square plus the y value square. So we have the x value to be 24.2 and then for the y value, that is negative 71.6. So that becomes 75.58 so that is the value of r 75.58 units now to the angle alpha alpha is equal to tan inverse of the absolute value of y divided by that of x so that becomes alpha equals tan inverse of the absolute value of y that is 71.6 divided by 24.2 and that gives 71.33 so this is the value of the angle alpha now since we are interested in the value of the angle theta from this point through to this point is 360 degrees so to find the value of the angle from this point through to this point, we need to subtract alpha from 360. Therefore, we have theta to be equal to 360 degrees minus 71.33 degrees. And that is equal to 288.67 degrees. So this is the value of the angle theta. Now, since we have the value of r and the value of the angle theta, we can represent this complex number in the polar form. So we know that a complex number can be represented in the polar form as 
z equals r times into bracket cos theta plus j sine theta so let's substitute the values of r and theta in here so we have z equals r is 75.58 times cos theta is we have theta to be 288.67 plus j sine theta 288.67 so this is the value of z in the polar form now let's assume that we are supposed to leave our answer that is the angle theta in radians so to leave that in radians then basically we say that pi is equal to 180 degrees therefore what is equal to 288.67 degrees so we have x equals 288.67 times pi divided by 180 and that gives 5.038 in radians so we can substitute this in place of theta so we have z equals 75.58 times cos 5.038 plus j sine 5.038 so any of the two is correct this is when the angle theta is in degrees and then this is when we have the angle in radians so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye